For 8.2b, we're going to be estimating a solution and solving word problems, all related to systems of equations solved by substitution. Now our goal with this lesson is to learn to graph a system in order to estimate the solution and then also to write and solve word problems. So let's take a look at a couple examples where we have to graph a system in order to estimate where the solution would be and then we'll also look at some word problems as well. For our first example, we have the equations x minus 4y equals 4, and then we also have 2x minus 3y equals negative 3. Now both of these equations are written in standard form, and the easiest way to graph a problem in standard form is just to identify what the intercepts are, and here's what that's going to look like. We know that the y-intercept is going to be at an ordered pair where we have 0, comma, something. We don't know what that something is yet, but that's what we're trying to find. There's also something called the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is going to be at something, comma, zero. So if we find out what those values are for y in this order pair and x in this order pair, we can just plot those points and connect them with a straight line. So here's how that works. We're going to start off with our zero value, which is going to get substituted in for x. So when we substitute zero in for x, we have zero minus four y. And we don't really need that zero then. So what we have now is negative four y equals four. Divide both sides by negative four, and we get y equals negative one. So our first order pair is going to be zero comma negative one. Now for our second order pair, we're substituting zero in for y now. So substitute 0 in for y. So we have this minus 4 times 0. Well, that all equals 0. So we end up with just x equals, this again, this part goes to 0, so x equals 4. And so we have our two ordered pairs. And I know I rushed through that quickly, but I want to get through the examples that we can. So let's go through it again one more time with the green equation this time. So we start off with 0 comma blank for our y-intercept and blank comma 0 for our x-intercept. We're going to take this 0, substitute it in for x here. That means 2 times 0 goes to 0, and so we're left with an equation that is negative 3y equals negative 3. Well, if you divide both sides by negative 3, you'll get y equals 1. All right, so there's our first order pair. Now for our second order pair, for our x-intercept, we're going to substitute 0 in for y. So this minus 3y, that all goes to 0. So we have 2x equals negative 3. 2x equals negative 3, divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals negative 3 halves. So now what we need to do is we need to plot these four sets of points. We want to connect the purple points to make one line and the green points to make another line and see where they intersect. So I drew my coordinate grid. Now I'm going to go ahead and plot my two purple points. So for 0 comma negative 1, that's going to have me just go down one unit on the x on the y-axis, sorry, and put a point there. And then for my x-intercept at 4 comma 0, that just means to go right four units and I put my next point there. Now what I do is I use my straight edge to draw a straight line connecting those points. So there's my purple line and now I go ahead and connect or I plot my green points and connect those as well. My first order pair is at 0 comma 1 so that's up one unit from the from the origin. First point goes there. Second point is at negative 3 halves comma 0. So what that means is I have to go left three, three halves of a unit. That's one and a half. So my second point goes about right here. And if it's not perfect, that's okay, because again, we're using this just to estimate. So here's what my green line looks like when I graph it. Now, as you notice, my lines did not intersect, so I have to draw my purple line going a little bit further. And that, if that happens, that's okay. So I'm going to extend my purple line. And so now we have our point of intersection. And this is why it's real important to use a straight edge when you're drawing your lines, because I realize that those two lines do not intersect at a grid line intersection. And we knew that would happen because this is an estimation problem. 
but we want to try and figure out which ordered pair is that point of intersection closest to. So which ordered pair is this closest to, that point of intersection? I'm going to highlight the point so we can try and get a good grasp of where it should be located. And to me, that seems to be close to, let's see if we go left, one, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's closer to five. Negative five comma one, two, three. Probably negative five comma negative three. So I got negative five comma negative three. Your book actually got negative five comma negative two. So again, using a straight edge is important because it'll help us get a better estimation of where the point should be. Now let's use substitution to confirm that our answer is close to negative five comma negative three or negative five comma negative two. When I look at these two equations, the only equation that has a variable by itself is this top purple equation. I have this x variable by itself, so I'm going to solve this top equation for x. I'm going to rewrite it. x minus 4y equals 4. Now to isolate the x variable and get it by itself, I'm going to add 4y to both sides. So I get x is equal to 4y plus 4. Now what I do, I take this 4y plus 4 and substitute it in for this x here. So I have 2 times 4y plus 4 minus 3y equals negative 3. Now I'm going to distribute. So when I distribute, I'm going to distribute my 2 to the 4y and my plus 4, giving me 8y plus 8 minus 3y equals negative 3. I'm going to combine my like terms. My like terms are going to be 8y and minus 3y. That's going to give me 5y plus 8 equals negative 3. I'm now going to subtract 8 from both sides. Giving me 5y equals negative 11. So we see that this is not going to turn out nicely. But 5y divide both sides by 5. I get y is equal to negative 11 fifths, or I'm going to convert that to a decimal, make it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm sorry, mixed number, 2 and 1 fifth. And so we see that negative 2 and 1 fifth, somewhat close to negative 3. The book was probably a little bit more accurate, that it should have been closer to negative 2. All right, so we have our y value. Now we want to substitute this y value back into this equation here and solve for x to see if we get a number close to negative 5. And since I'm running out of room, I'm just going to show that work over here. So I have x is equal to 4 times, I'll go back to the improper fraction, negative 11 fifths plus 4. 4 times negative 11 fifths, so it gives me x is equal to negative 8.8 .8 plus 4 so x is equal to negative 4.8 okay negative 4.8 pretty close to negative 5 so my final ordered pair then would be negative 4.8 or negative 4 and 4 fifths comma negative 2 Point 0.2 or negative 2 and 1 fifth. Probably not the best way to have a decimal and a fraction both in an ordered pair, but we know that they're both rational numbers, so it ends up being okay. For our second system of equations, we have x minus 4y equals 2, and then we have 3x plus 2y equals negative 6. So again, we're finding our x-intercept and our y-intercept for both of these. So we're going to have 0 comma blank and blank comma 0, and we have to fill in the blanks. So for our first equation in blue, starting off, substituting 0 in for x, 
and giving that leaves us with negative 4y equals 2. Divide both sides by negative 4, and we get y is equal to negative 1 half. Then for our second order pair, we have blank comma 0. So here we're substituting 0 in for our y value of our order pair. So that all goes to 0. So we're just left with x equals 2. So our two order pairs are 0 comma negative 1 half and 2 comma 0. Now for our red equation, we have to do the same thing. Again, 0 comma blank and blank comma 0. So first of all, we're going to substitute 0 in for x. So 3 times 0 is 0, leaving us 2y equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 2, and we get y is equal to negative 3. And then for our other order pair, we have blank comma 0, substituting 0 in for y here. So substituting y, 0 in for y here. That goes to 0, so 3x equals negative 6, so x is going to equal negative 2. So here's our two pairs of numbers, 0 comma negative 1 half and 2 comma 0 for blue, and then 0 comma negative 3 and negative 2 comma 0 for red. So we're going to draw a coordinate grid, plot these points, draw lines connecting the points to see where approximately they intersect. And hopefully this works out well, because I just made up this problem. So for blue, our first point, 0 comma negative 1 half. So we start off by dropping down a half a unit and placing our first point there. And then 2 comma 0 is going to go about right here. And now we can go ahead and draw a line through those points. So there's my first line in blue. Next I have 0 comma negative 3 and negative 2 comma 0. So 0 comma negative 3, drop down 3 units. First point goes about right there. And then negative 2 comma 0 goes to the left 2. Let's try that again. Second point goes right there. And now again, draw lines connecting those points. All right, so not perfect, but close enough. And so here we have our two lines and our point of intersection being right here. So if I were to guess where that point would be, I would say it's about at negative 1 comma negative 1. That's my guess. That's my estimate of where those lines are going to intersect. But now we also need to identify exactly if that estimation is close or if we need to do a better job. So we're going back and we're solving this system using the substitution method that we learned about in our video from Friday. So when I look at these two equations, I have a coefficient of 1 here, and I know that because it's invisible, coefficient of minus 4 here, coefficient of 3, coefficient of plus 2. The only equation where I have a variable with a coefficient of 1 is this first equation for x. So I'm going to solve this first equation for x to get x all by itself. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. x minus 4y equals 2. And now to get that x by itself, I'm going to add 4y to both sides. These will cancel, leaving me x is equal to 4y plus 2. All right, so there's my first equation. x is equal to 4y plus 2. Now I'm going to take this expression here, this 4y plus 2, and substitute it in for x in the other equation. So here's what that will look like. So instead of 3x, we have 3 times the quantity 4y plus 2, plus 2y equals negative 6. To solve this, we first have to distribute, and we're going to distribute the 3 to 4y, and the 3 to plus 2, giving us 12y plus 6 plus 2y equals negative 6. I'm going to combine my like terms. Like terms are 12y, let's try that again, 12y and 2y, and my 6, it's supposed to be two lines under the 6, my 6 is not a like term. So when I add those together, I get 14y plus 6 equals negative 6. So now I have to move my plus 6 over to the right. I'm going to scroll down. So I subtract 6 from both sides. 
I get 14y equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 14. These cancel. Give me y is equal to negative 12 over 14. Simplifies to negative 6 over 7. Okay, so my first part of my ordered pair is going to be negative 6 over 7. I need to figure out now what my x value is going to be. So I'm going to take this negative 6 over 7 and I'm going to substitute it in to this y right here to help me solve for x. So I'm going to copy this down, but I'm going to bring it down. So I'm going to write right in the lower right hand corner. x is equal to 4. Instead of y, I'm going to use my value for x, which is negative 6 over 7. plus 2. So again, x is equal, x is equal, 4y, 4 times the value of y, plus 2, plus 2. Now I solve this for x. Start off by multiplying 4 times negative 6 over 7. So x is going to be equal to, let's see, negative 24 over 7. Bring down the plus 2. I'm going to rewrite this as an mixed number, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So x is equal to negative 3 and 3 sevenths plus 2. So when I combine those, I get x is equal to negative 1 and 3 sevenths. So that's my value for x over here. Not the prettiest ordered pair that we've ever come across. But this negative 1 and 3 sevenths comma negative 6 sevenths, to me, that looks pretty close to what we have there. It's not perfect. This graph is definitely not perfect, but it's pretty close to what that order pair would seem to be. All right, so here is our estimation. Here is our actual answer. And we can see that these values here are pretty close to these values here. It's not perfect again, but good enough. Good enough for an estimation. Now initially when I was planning on making this video I was planning on getting to solving word problems as well. We're just gonna get rid of that. We're gonna get rid of that and we'll come back to that in our next video which we're gonna have to add to our lesson. So 8.2b turns out to be it's only estimating a solution and our goal is to learn to graph a system in order to estimate the solution. Write down any questions that you might have. I know that the uh, x and y intercepts might have been a bit confusing, um, but make sure you ask questions so that we can address any questions or concerns that you might have in class.